Welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I remember this film being a lot better. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Demons, or Demoni, as it is also known as. Which okay. came out in 1985 by director Lamberto Bava, who was the assistant director to Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, oh. So with that said, Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Demoni? Well, the story follows Cheryl and Kathy, a pair of friends who have just been given free tickets to a movie showing at a run-down, creepy old cinema. When they get there, they realise that there's a load of other people who've been given free tickets and they all take their seats to watch a film on the big screen. Uh, one of the ticket holders scratches her face on a demonic mask and when she goes to the toilet, she is slowly possessed into a demon. This demon form now goes round and starts to attack all the people in the cinema and it's left to Cheryl, George, Ken and Kathy to try and escape the horrors. You a fan of Dario Argento, Ian? Oh man, I knew, I knew that was going to come out. Now, he didn't direct this film, but he did write the screenplay for it along with a couple of other writers. But Dario Argento's pretty famous film director, yeah. Italian horror director. Now I've watched a, I've watched quite a few of his films when I was younger. You know when I was going through this massive, huge horror phase yeah. of my childhood. It's like I need to eat everything up that's got blood and guts and gore in. And because I was so young when I when I came across films like I mean Dario Gento did um, Suspiria yeah. and Tenebrae yeah. and there's a lot lot of films like that and I found them boring and I I I, I found it, it dragged a lot of, out of a lot of my time and I understand that it's kind of like Italian art horror like I said I was young at the time and I was like eh. I can't really appreciate it at the time now I was the same because I reacted pretty much the same way to most of Dario Argento's films it was just like huge hype about it yeah. everyone was saying if you're a fan of horror and film you you need to watch these Italian horror films and when I did I was like you know, there was lots of insects and lots of use of creepy music and atmosphere. The but I wasn't was. getting, I wasn't getting horror. Yeah. Uh, uh, but now revisiting some of Dario Gentile's works, I appreciate them a lot more now that I'm, I would say, a little bit more sophisticated when it comes to looking at horror yeah. movies. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like to, you know, put it alongside like, like I'm a big fan of the George A. Romero zombie movies. Yeah. You know, but then when I tried to watch zombie flesh eaters, I was like, ah. Really, this is this doesn't even hold a light to George A. Romero's movies, and it's the same with Dario Argento, where I'm like, I know he's really good, but I'd prefer to watch John Carpenter. You know, I prefer his style than than that style. Yeah. And so when Demons, when I finally got the chance to watch Demons, because I never watched it when it first came out in '85. You know, and I think it was you who first introduced me years and years ago. He's like, yeah, we've got to watch this movie. We've got to watch it. It's demons. It's, it's hardcore horror. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's sit down and watch it. And all that really stuck with me, I didn't even make it halfway through the film. I kind of, I think I walked out at one point, like I've, I've had enough. Um, it was the over the top gore and the ooze and the goo and all that, the pus and all that kind of stuff that put me off. I was like, really? You know? Yeah. <laughs> but watching it again for this review, I knew what I was expecting. I knew what was coming, but I don't know. I feel like something has, I feel like the film has lost something over the years. Like I said, we start with, with Cheryl, played by Natasha Hovey, uh, she sat on a subway train at the beginning with that funky ass <laughs> rock music playing over the top. Yeah. You know, and she's getting freaked out because every time she looks out the window, she keeps seeing Kano from Mortal Kombat 1 looking back at her. Yeah, it was kind of freaky to see a guy with like half of his face is metal. I, I was getting more of a Phantom of the Opera kind of feel. Yeah. But yeah, you see Kano. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And so yeah, you know, I, you know, as soon as the music started and you you just see all those people in the train carriage, I was yeah. just like, this is fucking eighties <laughs> to the max. I was like, I am fucking ready for this film. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, she gets off the subway and she watches everybody go wherever they're going, and she's on her own. I'm like, okay, the horror starts now, and she starts getting chased through the subway <laughs> yeah. by this masked man, Kano. Kano, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, eventually she thinks she gets away from him before she bumps right into him. 
Yeah. And he gives her a ticket, a golden Metropole ticket. Yeah. And uh, then she asks for another one. <laughs> yeah, she asks for another one because her friend wants one. And you kind of get that creepy aspect, don't you? Like, is she, is she special? You know, has he purposely found her out to give her this ticket? No, because he turns his back on her and he just starts handing out tickets to everybody. Yeah. Right? So, so Kano from Mortal Kombat 1 is handing out tickets for everybody to go to a cinema to watch a film. Okay? You got that? Just in case you haven't seen it. Cheryl meets up with her friend Kathy then and convinces Kathy that they should ditch college classes and they should just go to this cinema uh, because it could be a secret screening of a film that they've never heard of. You know, they don't even know where the fucking cinema is. They've never <laughs> even heard of the cinema. But it, obviously it's an 80s horror. Let's just run into the darkness, shall we? You know, but why? Why not? And they get to the cinema and... I mean, I do like the do like the set piece of the cinema. It's a nice the, little rundown cinema. Of course, yeah. And as soon as you see the Metropole Cinema, uh, instantly I was like, I've seen that somewhere before. Right. Somewhere in Silent Hill. Really? <laughs> yeah. And you even see in Silent Hill they have the uh, the the cinema tickets that the mast that Kano was handing out. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It's on the wall in next to the Metropole building in Silent Hill. Oh man! But yeah, the actual building that they used, I believe, was eventually used to show horror movies because of the popularity it got. You know, just like the Blob did yeah. with that theater, where everyone goes back there every year to yeah. watch the Blob. Uh, but the building, it just looks gothic with the statues there. It's yeah. a good set piece. Yeah, right. The thing I get with it, I the thing that throws me off with this film is the pacing. Like, I have... It's really fast-paced. How? What? Are we watching the same fucking film? Shit really? hits the fan within 20 minutes. Right, okay. Uh, I'll give you that. Shit hits the fan within 20 minutes. Then why does it feel so much longer to me? Why does this film seem like it's... It's not an hour and a half. This film feels like it's like three hours long. Like, certain what? six... This whole beginning sequence, like we said, she's gotten off the train. She's been given this ticket by... By Kano, we have no idea why. We have no idea where he's come from. She's met up with her friend, and they've gone to the cinema. They've they've found the cinema. I love that little bit where they're walking down the street. They have they're like, oh, we don't know where to go. Hey, look, there's the cinema. Okay, right, we found it now. Is it magic? Does it does it pop up like that shop from fucking you know Ankmo Pork, like the light fantastic shop? But they go inside, and there's all these other people there, and they've all got tickets, and you've got this gorgeous redhead just. Clipping everybody's tickets. Now, we'd seen her putting her stockings on. <laughs> Does she work for the cinema? Is she like an evil witch? You know, is she the queen of the demons? Is she related to Kano? I don't know. Is she... Does she just work for the cinema and she's actually working a nine to five job? And, you know, this is a side job that she's doing because she wants to look into hairdressing or something. I don't know. I don't know. These people just come in. That's what I mean. It kind of starts to drag out because in my mind, I'm like, I'm asking questions and nobody's giving me any answers or any clues to to anything. This part of the film is all about the setup. It's introducing you into the small clusters of 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 those that have come into the cinema you've got right, the, yeah you've got, yeah you've got the other couple that are there yeah uh you've got <laughs> the blind man and his daughter now this was this was designed as a joke by the filmmakers to yeah. have a blind man go to the cinema it's yeah. funny right it's, see see now see it's it's when you realize later on that that's his daughter yeah i always thought it was his wife you know <laughs> i thought it was his wife yeah you've got those you've got those two you've got the black pimp and his two prostitute girlfriends. Yeah. One of them that looks like Rick James. <laughs> I just love that he... It feels like his character has just been taken straight out of black exploitation movies. Yes. And put into this. Yes. He is amazing in this film. <laughs> amazing. Ow. What was that? Hey, you catch yourself. Oh, shit. That'll teach you to touch things. I don't know whether it's the actor's performance or whether it's the dubbing that goes on top. <laughs> yes. But I could just... That guy is awesome. And his his girlfriend, like I said, I call her Rick James because of her hair, but her name's Rosemary. She picks up this mask. Now, the lobby for the cinema is just set up where you've got what appears to be a knight dressed up as a ninja holding a samurai sword riding a, a, a motorbike. Awesome. That's got nothing to do with the film. So it's got nothing. I don't know. Did you see the rest of the film? <laughs> well, 
Well, it had a bike in it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it didn't have a fucking samurai sword. Did welding. you see the rest of the film I, that they were watching I, in the theater? No, no, because they turn it off halfway through. But the ma- the the the. the the soldier on the bike is holding a mask and Rosemary goes, hey, look, everybody, look how funny I can be and picks up the mask and puts it on to scare everybody and nicks her face. And you're like, right, okay, so the mask is evil. Yeah. Right. Now, you say yes, right? The mask is evil. Are you going with that? So the mask is in control of this whole situation. I wouldn't say it's in control, but I'm guessing it's a cursed artifact. Uh, who put the cursed artifact there? Kano? Know. The girl in the red? The cinema itself? The cinema itself. One character explains later that the, the building itself is cursed or that it's evil. Yeah, oh god, uh, yeah, oh. It's this theatre that kills. It has killed my niece. My little girl. The whole place is cursed. God. Evil doesn't need to explain itself. It does sometimes. It partially does because because it builds up to them now all sitting in the in the uh, in in front of the big screen watching this film and this film starts and this is where it kind of drags for me because I'm waiting I'm waiting for it all to kick off and it is going to kick off but we have to sit and we have to watch this badly dubbed movie. Inside a badly dubbed movie. Big deal, that hasn't happened. Not yet. Still time. A horror movie. I knew it. I you love know. that. <laughs> I know. You've got these teens and that they go to this abandoned graveyard at night time where supposedly Nostradamus was buried. And, you know, I, why are they there? Are they just there for fun? Are they trying to get off with these girls? We we don't know. But you've got Ken and George who have turned up in the movie and they've George has partially taken a liking to Cheryl. So the four of them all sit together. And you can kind of see the similarities between the four characters on the screen. Yeah. The four characters in the film, within a film, find a mask. And you're like, oh, so the mask is evil. It's in that film as well as in this film. And, oh, look, you know, it's cut his face. And now he's going to sl- slowly start turning. And now Rick James has realised her face is bleeding. So she runs off to the toilet. And we do get a kind of cool, gory, you know, it's, uh, takeover I don't know if sequence. it's really gory. It's just really disgusting. Yeah, 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 I was going to say. <laughs> you know, yeah. you see the wound just sort of bubbling up yeah. until it eventually blisters out and fucking explodes pus everywhere that's horrible right <laughs> right but okay was that brought on because of the film it was because of the mask she put on and that cut her which infected her with demon right in fact right right so the mask that cut her has infected her with this demon stuff and it's got a connection to the film which is being shown yeah which Kano gave tickets to everybody. So he purposely gave tickets to loads of innocent people so that at least one of them would cut their face and turn into a demon and infect everybody else. Yeah. Right. So when everything starts kicking off, because Rick James turns into a demon and her friend comes to the toilet to find her and gets her throat ripped and she bursts through the cinema screen. When everybody tries to escape Gary, when everybody tries to escape from the cinema... It's been bricked in. Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? What do you mean, yeah? Like, like, like that makes sense. Like, like you've already said the mask has infected her with demon shit, which Kano purposely got all these innocent people here. And the cinema, which you see, and we get told later on by a blind man, is cursed, bricked itself, bricked its own doors to stop the people from getting out. Evil works in mysterious ways. Is either that or there's a cult outside that have been waiting for this to happen that have bricked them all in within 20 minutes? <laughs> what the fuck? That or the building itself is evil and so therefore can just rearrange the walls however it wants to. See, now you're saying or because they don't give us any explanation in the No, film. and it doesn't need one. Not for this <laughs> type of film. 
It just doesn't. It's a, it does. You, you just got to go along for the zany rock and roll gore fest that it is. See, now I, I did, and it was fun. You know, once, like I said, once Rick James became a demon and started killing off our friends, you know, it's it was just silly. You know, you've got Liz, the daughter of the blind man, and what a weird sequence that was where she's just sat there watching the film with her dad and the dad's like, what's going on? Well, there's some people here and some people there. Are they scared? Yes, they're scared. And then this random guy just comes walking along and sits right next to Liz. And then two seconds later, they're making out and he's like really trying it on. Well, his hand disappeared somewhere. Oh, oh yes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. See, and I'm sat there and I'm like, so do they, does she know him? You know, are they lovers? <laughs> you know, a random guy. Or is it a random guy? Is she so so sexually repressed that she will literally just top on to anybody? That's maybe. I, <laughs> what do you mean, maybe? <laughs> I'm not supposed to be trying to question that. If anything, if anything, those are the questions I should be having problems answering because all the other stuff has been answered for me. <laughs> but because all the other stuff hasn't been answered for me, I'm like, I'm looking for shit anywhere. <laughs> And she's making out with this guy behind the curtains and fucking Rick James just appears <laughs> with the rope and ties it around the two of them so tightly that they you know, suffocate and die. They suffocate each other and die. And then and then she wraps the rope around his head and, and throws, throws him, him over the balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why? <laughs> just I'm j I'm having trouble trying to work out the whole premise of the whole Everybody being taken over by demons. That's the idea. Just everybody being Just taken to over kill, by demons. Make everyone demons. The demons rise again. Remember, it said on the tombstone yeah, that they will make. I uh, I love that line. They will make graveyards. Their cathedrals, their cathedrals and sit and they will make tombs of your cities. Yeah, love love that line. I'm like, that's really really cool. And the fact that I'd already seen it before. I knew what the ending was. And the ending is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that everything else building up for it, it's like it's not even plot holes. It's like plot chasms. <laughs> you know? It's like you get you get to the edge of this hole and you look down and there's a sign going, don't go that way. Go, go this way. Go take the long way round to get the explanation. You want to go down that road? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody just starts getting killed off. Um, and everyone's being turned into demons. And there's some really cool deaths. Like the blind man, he gets Rick James's thumbs into his eyes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the the girl who had, had her throat cut and had come through the screen, she had turned in front of everybody. Yeah. And so everybody had Which seen Which caused it. the panic and everybody to go running everywhere. Yeah. To yeah. try and find a way out. Yeah. And that's when they realised that... The doors that they came in through have all been bricked up. Yeah. So then they try and find other escapes until they realise they're kind of locked in here. And it's it's at this point that... Uh, <laughs> by, by who? Who locked them in there? The entity. I don't know. Kano. Kano. Yeah, exactly. Where's he gone? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he did it all. He did. He bricked the whole entrance. It certainly up. wasn't the redhead, was it? I mean, well, she's no, absolutely because... terrified like everybody else. Exactly, yeah. So it goes to show that she's not involved in whatever is going on. Or maybe she was and she's just still hiding it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not part of the film. But they all get themselves up to the higher balcony and yeah. come yeah. up with the idea of blockading all the doors until help comes. They they also realise that, that the film has something to do with it. And th this is what throws me off. It's like, everything is a red herring in this movie. You know, is it the mask? Not really. Is it the cinema? Not really. Could it be the film? Well, once they turn it off and realise that it was all automated, not really. <laughs> you know? None of it. None of it makes any sense. Like Gary said, they're all just in here to be fodder for these demons. And so they get onto the balcony and they blockade the doors and now they're just waiting. Yeah. But once they've destroyed the cinema uh, reel and the film is stopped, it then cuts to four punks in a car. Okay, now this <laughs> is, for me, where the, the pace of the film finally drops. Because <laughs> okay. from the beginning all the way up until this point, things have just started escalating. Every five minutes, it's yeah. getting the situation gets worse and worse. Until it cuts to completely outside, and, you know, they're just driving along and everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're... they're they're drinking Coke. Oh, wait. No, they're not drinking Coke. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was snorting Coke out of a Coke can up his nose. Yeah. 
And it turned out that it's actually full of cocaine. Yeah. Now, you know, Demoni, or Demons, as it's known in the UK, as I said, is was a video nasty for us. And <laughs> yeah. obviously, when it was shown over here, they took out all the gory parts, all the gross parts. But the, the scene that caused the most controversy mm. was when that coke gets splashed all over the car. Yeah. And, you know, one of the guys is like, you need to pick it all of it up. Gram by gram. Yeah, and we fucking sit there and watch him do it. Well, all of that was cut from the original UK release, and now you can actually see what's going on. And yeah. we get this additional sequence where he has a razor blade and some her... cocaine and her boob. Yeah. I was very surprised about this shot. Like, yeah. Like, it goes on for a while. And then he cuts her boob. Yeah. That was harsh. Yeah. <laughs> But eventually they, you know, they pull over and the police come up to them. Yeah, yeah. And they they end up running away from the police. But they've been hearing noises come from the cinema because all the people inside were bashing on the walls trying to get help. And so the four punks decide to run into the to cinema and the door's locked first. But then it's unlocked. They make their way in and the demonically possessed blind man... He gets out into the streets and he attacks the two police officers, and that's the last we ever see of him. That was pretty cool. But then we do follow the punks coming into the cinema trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And of course, they remove uh, the vending machine from the doorway. Yes, that we'd seen Rick James get locked behind earlier. Um, yeah. And the female. Of the female punk, she gets in there and she gets killed off. Right. And the three last punks are forced into... Well, they're surrounded by everybody who's been turned into demons and they get killed. And it's at this point as well that the, the guys up the top... Um, they are, heard gunshots. Yes. And, thought and they it, thought help had arrived. So they start removing all of the barricades. Now, there are some really iconic shots in this film hidden within all of the fucking silly, stupid dubbing and craziness of, of it. Like, for example, like we said, that you had the black pimp and he he was pretty smart because he wanted to get rid of the blind man the blind man's daughter's body before she turned. And everybody else was saying about how she was already dead. But she does come back and he gets grabbed and pulled over the edge yeah. and gets killed off. Well, when he turns... He comes up the stairway yeah. with everybody else. And you've got that amazing, amazing shot. That blue light behind them. The yeah. slow-mo coming the up. slow-mo coming up. The glowing of the eyes. eyes. It just it <clears throat> looks so brilliant. But, yeah. And, you know, you've seen that shot loads of times on posters. Yeah. You know, it's been used in lots of pop culture references. And it's absolutely brilliant. It's like one of the only saving graces for this film. Oh, come <laughs> on! It's one of the best sequences about to come up. Oh, what? Go on then. Go on then. We'll get to that. But first we've got <laughs> this other couple that have decided that they're going to sneak away and make their escape through the air vents. Oh! Wait, what was that noise? What noise? Keep moving. Um, and so, yeah, the two of them end up going through through the shafts and he's like it sounds like it's coming from behind us so you go in front and then he starts screaming because the sound sounds like it's coming from in front of him and then he screams and because she was already a demon yeah well, i mean <laughs> she got fucking gooped on like really badly yeah and yeah was it i think his girlfriend was called hannah and yeah. she was hiding among the seats and when the pimp threw one of the demons off the off the balcony it hits the chairs, and then it just kind of bleeds and throws vomits up, all vomits over all over her. Yeah. And then she gets rescued by her boyfriend. And, uh, I mean, that sequence was kind of cool with them in the air vent and him saying about how it's behind them. But I was just like, this thing is taking so long to kill you. It's either got to be your girlfriend, and she just hasn't properly turned yet. Or it's going to be a really bad cop out of a scare, mm -hmm. and it was kind of a bit of both, <laughs> really. You know, well, it just needed to write them off and just go right. Yeah, demons, demons, more demons everywhere. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. There's such a large number of people in this cinema, and you don't see all of them. You don't hear all of their stories. No, but you see them all in the background. That 
you know, as a as a as a film reviewer, you're you're like, right, we've got to, in a way, you've got to keep track of the numbers. Because if you only have five demons running around and you've had 15 people in the cinema... Where you, are the rest, yeah. Yeah, where are the rest? Where you do get to see the large group of demons. And a lot of the time, they are just kind of killed off screen. Or, I mean, it's like when they remove the barricades. You see some guy, like, lying on his back, like, ah! And then somebody <laughs> starts nuzzling his, his neck. And you're like, oh, it looks so cute. <laughs> Well, you know, this is where it starts to get to the kick-ass moments in the film. Where we're down to sort of like the last four survivors. And yeah. it's the main four. Yeah, it's the main four. It'll be and following. one of the guys has been bitten and he goes running off. Well, yeah, his... Was it... It's Kathy. She turns first. Yeah. Because, oh, she's in shock. No, we've seen shock a lot in this movie. And if the, if the person's got their back turned to you for at least five minutes, they're a demon. Yeah, yeah. You know? So she, she does demon out. They kill her. Well, he kills her with, like, a grate. Yeah, bashes her fucking head. Oh, and the fucking thing comes out her back. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Fuck, Harry! Come on. I mean, now, it, I'll put it. I will say the uh, the effect is 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 ropey now because when she's on all fours, you see her there. Yeah. And in the next shot, you can tell that it's a, you know it's a mannequin yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then yeah, the creature pulling itself out and running off. I don't know what the fuck that was. All I can <laughs> say is that it's that is I guess the demon. The demon. Know, the demon, or just one of. Wait, the demon. So, so you get scratched by a demon, you become possessed by a demon, but if you get killed while being possessed by a demon, a demon will climb out of your body. Maybe. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, you know, from dusk till dawn. Like, one of those vampires just turns into that fucking dog creature. It's like, where, where was well, he that? Had, yeah, well, he had his head ripped off, and he was already a vampire, and we knew he was a vampire because he'd been bitten by a vampire. Yeah, well, she got scratched and bitten by a demon. But we have no... I'm, oh, yes, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's building up to the big final fight sequence where Ken has run off at this point uh, because he just... He, he did, knows he's going to turn. He's going to turn and he's going to kill his friends. Uh, but he grabs the samurai sword off of the knight and tells George to, to kill him. It's kind of a bit of a man-on-man uh, -man gay bro <laughs> rat, romance Some thing Some of the there. worst dialogue oh, yeah. right here. Oh, absolutely, totally. But he kills... Uh, George kills Ken... After he turns into a demon anyway. Uh, yeah, after he turns into a demon. And then realises he has to save Cheryl. And jumps onto the bike and literally just rides around the fucking cinema. Chopping absolutely everything in sight that he can get his fucking blade on. Really. Fucking right! It's <laughs> fucking right. <laughs> it's, so, it's so fucking bizarre. It's so... You know, it's like... Oh, what, what, what do you need from a movie? Is, is a guy on a, on a motorbike with a samurai sword in a theater killing demons? Yeah, he is. You've got decapitations, there's bodies being cut to pieces, there's blood yeah, and guts going are everywhere. They even and dying? there's rock and roll music are, playing over the top. Yeah, are they even dying though? <laughs> well, I, I think so. He's definitely thinned out the numbers. Yeah, well. And yeah, this sequence did. goes on for a few minutes, and he's got Cheryl on the back as well. And uh, eventually she gets separated. Yeah, she he 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 slides the bike. She falls off. He crashes, he cuts crashes himself it. up. Yeah. And then just when things are looking pretty dire for them, a fucking helicopter crashes through the ceiling and lands in the middle of the theater. And you're just like, all right. So they quickly get into the helicopter. I don't know what. At first, I was like, "That thing's not flying anywhere." Yeah, that's it. But it turns out he just wants to just wants to have a throwback to Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. And just cut up some more zombies, uh, demons. Cut up the more demons. <laughs> and you just got to think how stupid the demons are to just go running into it. But I don't, mate, they they were stupid enough to try and fly a helicopter. Yeah. Was it demons flying the helicopter? I'm, ass I'm assuming there must have been one in there. Those two guys didn't die of natural causes. Well, that means the demons must have broken out. <laughs> and that's that's it. Once they get to the once she uh, George and Cheryl get onto the roof, they look out into the city and they realise that people have turned into demons. The the blind man has managed to infect as many people as he can in the city. And the city the is police officers. The and, police officers. Yeah. Everything is just. And this is what I kind of like about the ending, that it just it's, it started off in this little cinema, and now it's become like a fucking city-wide epidemic. I still have no clue where the fuck the demons ever came from. Um, 
But George and Cheryl, they, they race through the city being chased by demons and they're picked up by a, a, a guy and his children. Well, before that, the, once they do get to the roof of the, uh, of the oh, cinema, yeah, yeah. They, you wondered where Kano went yeah, and he turns Kano. up for a surprise attack. And, you know, <laughs> and George is like, just run, Cheryl, run. But she comes back and stabs him and kills him. And... Yeah, they stab his face onto a metal rebar, don't they? It's pretty gross. It's, they don't even stab his face. They stick a pole around his head and they just keep they lever his face down, down onto it. I was like, in, yeah, until his head goes on this thing. Yeah, fatality. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, and then they uh, they do escape into the city, and then they are picked up by by a family in a jeep. Yeah, that have got you know guns prepared. It's like yeah. they were ready for the they apocalypse. Were fucking ready. I mean, literally, this 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 shit kicked off like what an hour ago, and these guys are already out of the city, heading to a quiet spot that hasn't been taken over yet. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have your apocalypse plan ready. Or well, we looked outside and we saw lights and realized there must be safe places. What, just from lights? That could be fire in the distance. And just like that, the film ends. The credits start coming up the screen. And I was like, what? Yeah. You can't just end it there. But you, know, you can't just let end it there because we have a look at the back of Cheryl's head for three or four minutes. And as I've already stated, if, if a character in this movie has the back of their head showing to you, they're probably a fucking demon. <laughs> And lo and behold, she turns around and she's a fucking demon. So they blast her off the jeep and drive off. <laughs> and, and George is left with the family. And that's it. Sole survivor. Yeah. Well, this film does have like seven sequels. I know. I was very surprised. I've only seen the second one. Well, the second one is the only real official sequel with the same, you know, the same production team coming back on it. Yeah, it's and kind of the same concept where it, demons it, just take over a birthday party. Pretty much. Now, the, the film that we've just watched becomes the film in Demons 2, yeah. which starts everything off again. Yeah. So it was like the film within a film within a film. Within a film. And then Demons 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, there's, there's like two Demons 3s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were all films that were not a Demons film that the distributors just went, we'll change the title to Demons 3. Like Hellraiser. Like well, like I mean, Hellraiser. I mean, well, Hellraiser had its script changed. This was a film that was already completed, and then they just changed the name of it to Demons Six, yeah, Demon Three, the Ogre, whatever. And so, yeah, the second one I, I didn't like. I actually couldn't make it through the second one, and you just look at all of the demon sequels that follow and just go. It's not even a real demon sequel. Like, I'm not going to watch this. Please tell me we're not going to do them for a Halloween series. No. Oh, please now. <laughs> so, Ian, favourite scenes oh, from man. Demons? I, I had a few. I, like I said, I found a lot of the film really corny and stupid. And so I was, I could easily just say any of the speaking parts, any of the acting were, were some of my favourite scenes because they were so bad. But I'm not going to. There's that part where um, the, the guy who's brought his wife to the cinema for their anniversary, he gets grabbed and yeah, his throat, his throat all gets apart. all ripped out and stuff like that. That was a cool effect. Hannah getting uh, gooed on, basically, and vomited, and then the, the 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 pimp getting killed. That was like a really cool sequence. And then it leads into the coke on the boobs sequence. I, I like that. <laughs> I, could, I could watch that a few, few times over. I, uh, my, but my ultimate favourite scene has always been in Demons is the sequence where you see them coming up the stairs. Hell yeah. Uh, love the lighting. I uh, love the way they move. Love the, the effects that it has on the eyes. Um, and it is just the same. I, I mean, I know I'm going to get slated for this, but it's just a, just a shame that that sequence can put over, you know, so much horror, so much terror aspect from that view alone. And yet it's missing from the rest of the movie. You know, it's it. I like I said. I remember when I was a kid and I saw that poster with them, to, and I'm like, oh my god, that looks fucking terrifying. It's on the front cover of the DVD box. You know, every time you put, type demons into Google, that image will pop up, and yeah, it's like for a fraction of a second in the movie, and the rest of the movie is corny and stupid. And <laughs> I I do like the uh, the artwork that they made for the uh, for the for the 
album or the the soundtrack for yeah. the film yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. was actually used on some vhs tapes as well and it's uh it's a demon hand right. holding a theater full of chairs and everyone sat in them ah. i was like that's a really great piece of artwork as well and so yeah that artwork and that shot of them coming up out of, uh, up the stairs is just so iconic it's yeah. part of horror iconography without a doubt but I do have a fair few memorable and favourite sequences from the film, other than that shot of them coming up the stairs. And that's the pimp character, you know? I, you just want to watch the film for him. Because <laughs> he's a badass. He's and not he's in a, it that much. He's not in it that much. And that so much. when he dies, that's when the film sort of... Mm, <laughs> it's not as good without him. <laughs> Uh, the bike chase with the samurai sword, That's you know, that is, it's the highlight of the film. It's stupid. I know that. But I'm, I've gone with the film up until this point. So it, when that happens, you're like, fuck it. Anything can happen in <laughs> yeah, this any, film. Anything, anything. Anything. The ending, you know, with the with them killing the Kano and then getting on the Jeep and riding off only for Cheryl to turn yeah. into a demon post credits or during the credits yeah. it's just like that's awesome you're like didn't expect it and then as they drive off and George is looking over the back you're just like fuck they, they literally just killed her off right, <laughs> right after then. the film ended yeah. <laughs> fuck I definitely recommend Demons it is for me the evil dead meets return of the living dead it's kind of meshed together not quite perfectly but but still <laughs> meshed together <laughs> It is over the top and gory. It's a splatter horror. And it's comical in its effect. It's matched with the dialogue and the delivery of it. It's fast paced with a few lulls that don't drag out too long, unlike the music in the film. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of rock artists in there. There's like Billy Idol and yeah, Scorpions. Billy Idol, yeah, yeah. And there's a, quite a few others. But the actual theme piece to the film it's way overused in the film and during some of the chase sequences I was like I want it's not that I want the chase sequence over so that I just kind of want this music to, to end yeah uh, it got a little bit annoying even though I still loved it the first time it came on some really great practical effects some good visuals and it has everything that you would really want from a B movie so on those grounds I easily recommend demons uh, I do recommend Demons, but with a bit of a warning. Like I said, I feel like this film's lost something over time. I, I was thinking about it while you were actually talking about it then. You know, when we were growing up, this film was a video nasty. Yeah. You know, and so when you heard that, when you heard that this film had controversy, you wanted to see it. That's the reason, yeah. But the thing was, by the time we got to see it, we'd already gone through so many other films yeah. you know we'd already seen the evil dead the texas chainsaw massacres the halloweens the nightmare on elm street the, the exorcists the yeah. exorcist the the friday the very we'd seen all of that before we'd seen demons you know and yet and yet when we watched that we were like ah it's all right you know you say it's, it's like evil dead and return of living dead yeah i wouldn't say it's as good as that no, it's I, not as good as either of those. No, no, yeah, that's it. It's it's not as good as either of those. And the and and that's the thing, like like comparing it to the Evil Dead, it, it loses out a lot of on a lot of points it, it loses out. And so watching it nowadays, even if you didn't even if you're not going to watch it now and decided, you know what, I'm gonna watch it ten years from now, then you're really gonna miss something from it. And I think that's just gonna be a continuing thing for demons forever is that it will slowly start to lose its horror aspect over time and people will be like hey you want to watch a comedy <laughs> let's watch demons you know awesome oh, oh man we've got a choice we've got, we can either watch an am sandler movie or demons hey let's watch demons yay that's easy choice <laughs> but and that's the problem because then like i said i'm not recommending it as a horror movie anymore i'm recommending it as a comedy and so like I said, I do recommend Demons for you. If you've never watched it on, as a horror fan, you should watch it so you can tick it off your bucket list. Um, if you're not a horror fan, you could still watch it. It is funny. Um, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise avoid. Otherwise avoid it. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews.
You heard him. Right? Yes. We gotta stop it. <laughs> Believe me, we gotta stop the movie. <laughs>